All right, guys, we're live here at the beautiful Miami Springs Country Club, and I'm joined by Dr. Vis Victor Vasquez, who's running for Miami Springs City Council Group 4, correct? That is correct, yes. All right, so, you know, we, we try to meet with the different candidates uh, during election season, and, and as, uh, you know, Friday was the official deadline, and, and, and you're one of the four candidates who's running. Uh, in your seat, there are two candidates that are running, so we want to sit down with the different candidates and let the community kind of get to know you a little bit better. Cool. So uh, let's start with introducing yourself. Tell us a little bit of, about yourself and, and your background. Um, well, uh, Victor Vasquez, uh, I've been at uh, Miami, uh, Miami Springs now for 10 years. I'm originally from New York. Okay. I uh, lived in Philadelphia for a while. I'm a professor of history at Miami Day College. Um, and I have uh, two children here in the Springs. One uh, graduated from uh, Middle and Springs okay. High, and my son is graduating this year. Excellent. And um, did you say you're you're a professor at Miami Dade College as well? That is correct. Okay. I teach I teach history. And how long have you been a professor there at uh, at Miami Dade College? At Miami Dade, sixteen years. Sixteen years. So I now have the rank of full professor. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Professor Vasquez, <laughs> yeah. if I may. Um, uh, so what you know? So you so you you've, you've been a, uh, here at Miami Dade College, but then ten years ago you decided to move into Miami Springs. What what made you decide to to move to our beautiful town? Well, I've known about Miami Springs for a long time. Uh -huh. My sister used to live here. Uh, first, she lived in the in the Virginia Gardens uh, township, and then and then in, in Miami Springs. I'd come down to visit my family, and and we'd spend some time here. And and my wife and I always. Had, had an admiration for the town. It really okay. had the city. Really had a really nice feel to it. Uh -huh. uh, the beauty and and uh, kind of a small town feel, but it but it's a city, right? Yes. And uh, you know we 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 you know visit the restaurants and things of that nature. And uh, when we decided to move to Miami um, uh, 16 years ago, right? Um, one of the places that we thought about was uh, buying uh, in Miami Springs. Of course, at the time. Uh, the housing bubble was uh, going a little crazy, yeah, and right. so we had a rent for a while. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, ten years ago, we got lucky. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, welcome to, to you know to, to the neighborhood. I guess you know for now for the last ten yes, years, yes, we, yes. we definitely appreciate it. And uh, uh, so, you know, you you uh, decided to join council. What what made you decide to uh, run for council? What made you decide to run for council? Well, I've always been a person of concern for. Okay local neighborhoods. I've always been someone who's, you know, who's kept an eye on things and, uh -huh. and, and likes to feel good in, in the neighborhoods and to volunteer and uh, wherever I've been. Uh, okay. From the time I joined the Air Force as a young man, uh, I've always had this call to service. Okay. Uh, I've never run for political office before. Uh -huh. Been around politics a little bit, but right. not really run for office. Um, and uh, I I mentioned it earlier that last uh, the last election no one ran and I yeah. thought that was really strange, um, and so um, I, I I have some things that I'm concerned about, some things that I like about Miami Springs right. that I like to see enhanced. Sure. Uh, and uh, um, two open seats that's kind of attractive too, right? A little harder to run against incumbents. Uh, and I thought, well, discussed it with my family and said, well, let's. Uh, what do you guys think? And uh, and they said, yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, we think you'd bring some good ideas, and uh, and and I work very well with people. I have right. all my life, right? And so there's you got to be able to do that to be on council, and also to be uh, to be a listener, to listen to people. Excellent. You know? So you know you, you mentioned that you have um, some concerns and some things that you want to see in, improved. So why don't we dive into that in terms of, you know, what are some of the, the things, I guess, maybe the biggest issues that you see facing Miami Springs right now? Well, absolutely. I, I, I've always uh, I thought that uh, having a good, strong economic base uh, in a community, no matter how small or large, uh, is of fundamental importance. Um, I drive through the city every day. Um, uh, you know, I visit the restaurants. My banking is on Westward and, and so forth and so on, like most Miami Springers. And, um, and, and, I, and as COVID has hit us so hard, this past year, it's made me really think about the economics of the city, right? And what's going to happen here, and, and the small businesses in particular. So I'm uh, a very uh, uh, important aspect of, of revenues in the city is the small business community, and it's taken quite a toll. Yeah. Um, and I, so I think that it's not only uh, uh, an opportunity to help small businesses that are here in the downtown district, but really take a good look at how we can revitalize and redevelop the city, give it another look. Mm -hmm. In terms of the businesses downtown, make them even more attractive, um, attract other businesses. Right. right? 
I think it's better to have revenue than to have to raise taxes. I already pay enough taxes. I'm sure everyone <laughs> else does. And so I, I'd rather see us hold the line on taxes, maintain our services, right. but increase our revenue. All right. And one of the areas that I think is really ready for, for, for a significant change is our, our wonderful downtown area. Excellent. And um, you also said that there were some things that um, you really like about the city that you'd like to see improved, that you'd like to see, you know, maybe some more services or some, some other enhancements made there. You want to go ahead and dive into that a little bit further? Well, I, I'd like to preface that by saying that I've been really concerned about the crime, mm -hmm. and, and especially along Northwest 36th Street. A couple of days ago, yeah. there were some break-ins uh, down in the, in the Bird area. Yeah. But, but uh, everyone here knows that Northwest 36th Street, particularly around uh, some of the hotels, mm -hmm. and not all seedy hotels. Right? Recently, there was a human trafficking case that was actually in one of the larger hotels. Right. Um, and so uh, that concerns me because um, uh, we, have, uh, we have some businesses in the area, not only hotels and restaurants, but we also have potential for developing other kinds of businesses. Uh, we're a city that was founded on aviation. Right. I'm a former airman, so aviation to me is very special. So I think the we can we we have some opportunities to expand. Okay. Uh, I understand there are some projects to do some building uh, in the area, but I'm concerned that the crime that we have to fight in the area is shouldered almost exclusively by uh, Miami Springs Police. Yeah. And and the county really gets the revenues from the hotels. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and I feel for the residents that li live right behind the hotels and the places that have been most struck by. Um, uh, drug trafficking and, and human trafficking. Right. So I kind of see that area as twofold. It's really addressing that crime area, mm -hmm. but it's also looking at opportunities for other kinds of businesses uh, that can come in. Right. I think um, and, uh, this has just come before in terms of the, the funding. Like one of the issues that uh, I know Maria Mitchell has been a champion of this and, and, and work with uh, um, uh, Representative Avila and Senator uh, Diaz on, on trying to get a bed tax for um, in our hotels to help funding, you know, for services. We know our, our police are called out there all the time. Absolutely. And you know, there's a a a push, if you will, for a bed tax in the hotel to help, you know, pay for police and other services. Of course. Yeah. No. Under under normal circumstances, let's start, let's say that there wasn't a a a, a, a an uptick in security uh, or of crime in right. the area. It would still require. Uh, generally 24-hour security all around. That happens around any hotel district, anywhere in the city, anywhere in the country. Um, but to tax, uh, you know, to, to, to depend solely on, on our police force, I think it's not, uh, not quite fair. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to a meeting with the chief of police at some point and talk right. about how their funding is and how we can uh, ensure that, uh, that they're not fully funded, but that they have the resources that they need. But I think we have to do more with the county. Okay, really. so, so, so part of it with the, with the county is absolutely some with the county, uh, with the state, right? Um, you know, with our elected officials. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we need to find a better way of doing this. I just recently heard about the two hotels and the number of homeless people that are being put up there. Yeah, that part of the spill into the neighborhood mm -hmm. is that we're 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 we have in our neighborhood uh, about two thirds of homeless people that have been put in hotels in this area. Wow in their hotels in the other parts of the county. I'm not saying we shouldn't help, right? I'm sure, sure. I feel for homeless people. Right. Uh, but, um, but we're kind of carrying that, that weight a little bit, and I think that that's, uh, that's something to be looked at. And I know the, the city manager is aware of these, uh, these things. Right. Now, wh one of the viewers right now, uh, Randy McGee is watching, and I know they're going to have a, a, one of the questions that have been brought up in the past is, you know, there, there are some uh, businesses that sometimes have um, – Excessive calls of the police, and that uh, they have excessive what I'm ca calls of uh, to the police department. Yes, and that I th believe in in the code. There's um, or there's been reference to this that they could be fined for the <laughs> the excessive uh, uh, calling of, you know the police force, and that there's yes. there's an issue inherently there from a facility. Um, what do you what do you think about that? Well, that 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 is something that requires some serious attention because. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know that there, there are some kinds of businesses that attract a little bit more, um, uh, well, I don't know, nuisance. Uh, right. And, and, that, and that is something that we have codes for, as you mentioned, mm. and that they really need to be implemented. I mean, it's not, it's not fair that we can have. I, I, listen, I support, generally support small businesses in particular. Right. 
because in our country, small businesses are really the ones that hire the most people. Uh, and so yes, I'm sir. really, I'm really partial to that. But, uh, but places that are nuisance are a nuisance, and they need to be addressed. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just kind of reading through the comments. We got different people uh, who sure. are watching right now. And folks, if you have a, a question, feel free to put it in the in the comments here, and we'll try to uh, address them as we go along. Um, but I, I appreciate you bringing that up. And in fact, in the last election, you probably noticed that crime was was a big thing. Absolutely. And, and you know, you mentioned there was some t uh, some break-ins in, in the birth section, which is a little bit kind of rare. But there there are um, uh, many folks who live on what's called the east side of Miami Springs, between let's say Curtis Parkway and Lejeune. And sometimes they feel like, hey, we're ignored and they don't pay attention to us as much. What would you have to say to the folks who live on on the east side of Miami Springs and you know, feel like, hey, the the crime and or you know sometimes you know common complaint is the speeding, but the crime, you know, is is um, not being addressed, and feel sometimes that they're ignored on that side of Miami Springs. What what would you say to those folks? They'll have a voice on council. They'll have a voice on council because I ride around our, our city all the time. Right. And one of the things I'm always looking at is security. Um, and it's and it's uh, you know and what are the dark areas? I mean, what are the areas that that lighting? Um, needs to be improved, for instance, um, and 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 I think that's the significant thing. If that's a voice, we got to we got to bring that to the council, and 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 to the commissioner and so forth to to work on. Sure, I'm going to read one of the questions that just uh, came through. Uh, I'm going to try to simplify. But do you have any idea what will uh, what will be done to the dirt pile entrance to Miami Springs? I guess it's in reference to the construction um, there where the old uh, theater used to be. So the demolish is going to be a, a multi, um, I guess, apartments and, and yes, and, and, fifty-one and, units and, and retail exactly. 51 All right, units. folks. Well, here's what I heard right. this week. Shoot. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, because um, uh, around Christmas time, uh -huh. I heard that uh, they were going to break ground uh, in January. Okay. So here right. we are. Uh, almost uh, March. Almost March. Um, I, I've been assured that um, the uh, the uh, cons the building uh, construction is going to begin uh -huh. in March. Now. You need to understand that uh, this is uh, this is a uh, uh, there are two buildings actually that are going up, right? One is uh, one is an apartment building with 51 units, right. and the other one is a garage, right? That's gonna that's gonna lead out to to hook you know to out, out that area. Right. Uh, I've seen these constructions before. I've worked with uh, in, uh, at a university in Philadelphia. We did a lot of these uh, buildings, and the first thing that has to go is they have to dig down and make room for all of the wiring, all of the pipes. Mm. And that is what I understand is going to begin now in March. Okay. Now don't hold me to that because mm. I've heard different uh, things, but right. I got it from a good source that this is they're going to be breaking ground there right. uh, in March. Okay. But it is going to be a 51 uh, unit uh, residence right. with, uh, with uh, uh, commercial space uh, in the front. Okay. And we still don't know, as far as I know, right. what kind of commercial space, you know, what, what's going in there. Right. I've heard some different things. Right. Um, now, some of the residents, you know, while, while that project was going on, and, and obviously this is not, you know, while you've been on council, this is you didn't vote for this or even have no, an it was, it was, it was a little contested. Yeah, I, I remember. Um, and there was uh, some concern in terms of parking. You know, and if there was 51 apartments, I think there's only, if I remember correctly, I'm, I'm, I'm going by memory, but something like 70 something parking units for residents. Yes. And a lot of folks raised, hey, this, there's not enough parking there. So there, what are your thoughts in, in terms of those developments and having you know sufficient parking and, and what that does for traffic and that sort of thing? You know, I, I th going back to what I was talking yeah. about the redevelopment of the downtown area, and really that's going to be very important. Right. It's probably going to be real difficult to, to build a garage in mm -hmm. that downtown area. First of all, they're very expensive right. proposition. Um, so one of the things that has to be looked at is, is really traffic pattern. Mm -hmm. So um, the other day I was thinking about that small towns that I visited around the country, you know, they do a lot of angle parking. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that, that now, you may lose a lane, and so you have to have conversations about that. But I think the other thing that I've really been concerned about really touches on both of these mm -hmm. topics is how well or not are we communicating with the residents right. of the city and, and soliciting the input. Uh, you know, I think that, for instance, any redevelopment, any new development, uh, we should be talking about what it is that we would like to see, right? What kinds of small businesses? Mm -hmm. We have we have a number of businesses here. Wh what else would we would we like to see? I like to see a little gallery myself. I mean, I'm a you know I like art. Right. I'm a book person, right? <laughs> so, but they, that may not be something that's most attractive to people. But I hear from people all the time. 
you know, we got too many of these businesses, but we don't have enough of these other businesses. Right. Well, what kind of physical uh, aspects are needed for these businesses, and would they be sustained? And then again, traffic patterns is is super important. Mm -hmm. You know, where are people going to park? Right. Well, you know, that kind of leads to the overall question between crime and parking and traffic and, 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 and police is the overall quality of life in Miami Springs. And, and you know, Miami Springs, in the, in the scheme of things, has it good, right, Com compared to other neighborhoods, why, why we've I would I would agree with you. Know, chosen yes. to, to live yes. here. Um, uh, love the quality of life here in the area. Um, but a part of, of, of keeping that quality of life is the sensitivity everyone has to any little thing that starts to percolate. Yes. And, yes. and I think you just uh, definitely the number one in terms of the crime and the increase that, uh, that, that we're seeing in 36 Street. Um, give me one second. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I just uh, kind of reading the question. So, in terms of quality of life, what other, area, other areas of quality of life do you think you'd, you'd want to address um, uh, with with the community? Well, I think that for me, as I've walked around over the last few weeks, I mean, I do walking around in the city anyway. But I mean, just purposefully now as right. a candidate to really ask people when I was getting signatures for petitions and really asking uh, folks and and spending some time listening to people. Um, it, it is it is it is clear to me that people love the green space in Miami Springs. Right. Whether it's the Parkway, you know the the the, the ball the ball uh, uh, you know the ball uh, ball parks and the other smaller walking venues, the dog park, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, uh, Miami Springers really enjoy being outside and and keeping that uh, that uh, that sense of. Uh, Hey, you can see your friends. You can right. see people that you went to school with and you haven't seen. Um, and so, so I think that we really need to make sure that we maintain those areas and really limit any kind of future development right. that doesn't encroach upon those green areas because uh, Miami Springers really love them. One of the areas that's been threatened throughout the years is the the golf course. And yes. developers have wanted to, to take that golf course for a long time. And one of the reasons that the city of Miami Springs currently owns the golf course was the city of Miami, which previously owned it, uh, was considering selling it and building some townhomes and that sort of thing. So tell us what your thoughts on there are in terms of, of protecting the golf course. Which Keep it green, time. man. Keep <laughs> it green. I mean, I'm not a golfer, but I appreciate the park. Right. I love the 4th of July. Uh, you know, we haven't been able to do that. Uh, uh -huh. But but I, that's what I was referring to. You know, right. we, have, we have such great uh, uh, trees and canopies here, um, which is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's good for the environment. Uh, but sometimes it makes the areas a little dark, and so we need to really look at some lighting right. regarding that. But yeah, keep the keep the golf course, and uh, and and we got plenty of other areas to look at right. for uh, for development and and bringing in uh, you know more more uh, more uh, you know more businesses and and revenues. Right. Now you you, know, you brought up uh, uh, more businesses and revenues, and that's um, uh, you know, I think your residents all agree we'd like to have you know more businesses and revenues. So one of um, the concern there is, you know, what kinds of businesses uh, yes, you know, they yes, come of up. Course. You know, a lot of people said, oh, we're going to put more hotels in 36 and it's going to help our tax base. And look at us, now we have there are a lot of folks who say, hey, now we've got more crime on 36th Street and our taxes are still high and now there are probably less police, at least the perception is there's less police, you know, taking care of our residential areas because they're busy on, on 36th Street. I think we might need a moratorium on hotels. I mean, I, th uh -huh. I mean, the, it's great for the, for, the, for the hotel business. Right. It's great for people that are coming into the airport. Right. But, uh, for instance, I think that if we could connect mm -hmm. um, aspects of aviation, commercial aviation, right. and high tech, for instance, mm -hmm. there's a big move uh, in the county, uh, especially the mayor of Miami, to uh, bring in high tech um, um, uh, training. Right. Um, that would make a lot of sense for uh, Miami Springs, particularly given our aviation history. Right. But right there, um, you know, there are you know some of our schools have programs around around aviation, I think that would be a win-win for all. Um, I think that I'm a, I'm a college professor, and so right. I believe in, in people going to college if they want to. Right. But one of the things that I, and I watch trends, right? We all do that in higher education. I find at, at lots of reports indicating that there are certain trades mm -hmm. that don't have enough people, and we're going to be short on machinists, mechanics, and yep. all kinds of other uh, folks that we could some of the really well-paying jobs. <laughs> yeah, good-paying jobs. Uh, you know, I remember my I have a nephew who is a master plumber, right. and uh, and at one point he was uh, making more money than me <laughs> as a full-time professor. Right. But 
Um, you know, we don't have enough of that uh, available, but we but they have to be more high tech. And I think we right. could really manage uh, these uh, these tendencies. Uh, and that could be right there on Northwest uh, uh, 36th Street. Street, and it makes a lot of sense, especially with the aviation industry. Excellent. Um, you know, going back and, and you're just, you know, obviously we can a lot of different things, topics we can touch on. But one of the things that that uh, you kind of alluded to, there's been an increase in sex trafficking crimes on 36th Street, yeah, um, and and human trafficking, and uh, some will say there's a a an increase in prostitution and uh, along 36th Street, above and beyond the the, the, the drugs and the, the the other types of crimes. How would you address issues like that? Uh, you know, there on 36th Street. Well, I, it, this is first of all, it's not just a Miami Springs problem. It is a Miami Springs problem right. for our neighbors. Uh, it's right. a, it's a, it's a county problem, and mm -hmm. and uh, and and the uh, and the the case that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about yeah. the, the young lady that was lured down here yeah. uh, was uh, was really uh, you know a combination of uh, of police forcing yeah. uh, to do there, and so we need to understand what it is that's creating that particular situation mm -hmm. in Miami Springs, in the hotels around Miami Springs. Now, I know that we acquired one of the hotels that's going to be knocked down, yeah. and and someone's going to be building on this, so uh, uh, that's going to be a, a big improvement. Um, and and so one is really understanding the nature of the problem. Right. Human trafficking is an international problem. Yeah. What is it about our hub in Miami Springs that is that's contributed? or uh, has been used as a, as a place to develop this. Right. And so I think that's something that we really need to work uh, across several uh, policing um, um, situations and, and then really evaluate what can council do? Right. right? What's council's role in, in, uh, in the codes that maybe, uh, you know, people are skirting, you know, people, you know, work around the, the law, you know, people turn their, uh, their blind eye. I'm talking right. about people who work in, the, in this area. Um, the the guy that was uh, working in the hotel there he didn't see anything wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. with that couple that was coming in three people coming in and uh, you know might have been uh, a little mm -hmm. more aware of that I'm not blaming it all on him right, right. it was not his problem uh, but that's uh, so I think that what is it about this area that's really creating this we really ah. need to attack that from the roots so you know um, Anything else that you know we haven't covered here that you want to share with the community that, that you, you know, either about your background, about some of your plans and goals uh, on council you'd like to share? Well, you know, I, I, a couple of things probably that that uh, folks don't know about me, and and that are my skill sets, right. as I as I like to say. Right. Um, you know, I joined the military very young, so I learned to really work in organizations and discipline, mm -hmm. um, following orders, uh, working towards goals, making sure they get done working in teams mm -hmm. and, and so forth. And that's what I've done essentially all my life. Um, I've been very active with the American Legion post here in uh, Miami Springs. We're working on a new war memorial okay, great. Uh, where we do our, our Veterans Day and our Memorial Day celebrations. Um, I'm in charge of the committee to do that, been before its council and all the other cities, uh, Medley and, 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 and Virginia Gardens. That memorial is uh, dedicated to Miami Springers who have lost their lives, given their lives uh, in, in, in defense of our country. And so there have been others because the last time it was really worked on was in the early 50s. Wow. And so I'm very passionate about that. I come from a family of three generations of veterans going back to World War I. Wow. And so, uh, you know, it, it bothers me when I see people uh, flying, you know, flags that my father fought against. Right. You know, and that, right, yeah. so um, uh, and, and, and I'm an honored member of the American Legion. I'm, a, I'm also a disabled veteran, and, uh, and I'm also a big supporter of Boy Scouts. Okay. My son's an Eagle Scout. Uh -huh. He's going to get his, uh, finally his recognition this year. We couldn't do it last year because of COVID. Right. But, um, you know, I was a scout as a kid. He went much farther than I did. Um, and, and, and then, of course, my most important passion has always been education. So I've worked with uh, Miami Springs Senior High School with professors from Miami Day College, and I will continue to to support our schools in every way, which way we can um, to make sure that all the articulated agreements that we have in our public schools here in the city, we're, right. we're following up on them. Um, and lastly, you're going to get someone who's passionate. I think that comes across. Um, you know, I don't do anything halfway. Uh -huh. um, you know, I'll be an advocate for everyone. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, who votes for me or doesn't vote for me. If I'm elected, I'm a representative of Miami Springs. 
and uh, you know my doors are open right. everyone will have my number I mean it's just and, and you see me in Milam and all the other places all around so you know uh, I am a hands-on person so I'm looking forward to serving you my name is Brent well, we definitely appreciate it. I've got a, a couple more questions one of the, you know we, we're talking about uh, businesses and, and and new businesses and new development and, and, and uh, you're definitely in favor of, of trying to attract new businesses without having to tax you know help, help increase the revenue base um, so there are a couple questions there one of them is are are you one of the concerns that you know some of the residents have had hey you know we got this 51 apartments that's you know going to come up uh, downtown are there going to be a bunch of you know more apartments and the increasing in density what are your thoughts there in terms of increasing density residential density in our in our small town um, and then I got some questions in terms of annexation to, to, to get to but let's talk about uh, density here in my well uh, that's a very good question uh, and and it's and it's a question that's come up yeah in, in our conversations I think that it's important to uh, <coughs> to maintain the character mm -hmm. of our downtown downtown area right we have to maintain it within a certain density right uh, because uh, different kinds of business have different kinds of needs now um, is there a need for additional housing possibly um, but um, you know, are there other parts of the uh, of the city where we could do some uh, housing development? I know there's going to be one. I just heard about that this week on on East Drive near 36th Street. Okay. Um, you know, right, right where those hotels are going to be put. Uh, you know, going to be knocked down. Right. Um, and and uh, with its own parking and so forth and so on. Um, I don't see us putting high rises downtown okay well I mean, that's there's, there's a, 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 go, a, go, a height go, restriction there yeah I know there's there's restrictions but right. they could be they could be tight right, right. Uh, you know I, I, it appears to me I haven't seen all the full drawings and seen all the specs mm. that maybe some of those apartments that are coming in are gonna be a little tight mm. um, you know it's, it's 51 units um, I, I think we really need to take um, you know take it slow okay with any considerations about uh, you know increasing density sure now the second one I alluded to earlier was annexation, and, and the city I'm talking about this goes before you even moved into the to, yes, to into yes, the city. Yes, yes. This has been going around. I, I want to say maybe as far back as the late '90s, early 2000s, when the whole concept of, of annexation and uh, it, it boils down to uh, Miami-Dade County passed an ordinance that uh, to eliminate enclaves, and so when the city of Doral became a city, it basically closed off that little Milam Dairy section uh, between Medley. And Miami Springs and Doral, and I guess on the other side would be well the airport, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it created this little enclave there that's currently controlled by unincorporated Miami Dade, and so Miami Dade uh, has jurisdiction there. And so there was an agreement made between DG, Medley, Miami Springs, yeah, and, we're gonna and share Doral, that one, and yeah. we okay, we get this part, you guys get that part. Yeah, get yeah, yeah. And to this date, it hasn't happened. What are your thoughts in terms of uh, pushing for that? Are you for making that happen? And um, it, and if so, you know, what would you do to try to fight? To fi finally, after all these years, make, make it happen. Well, uh, first of all, there are agreements, right? So right. let's get back to the agreements and, right. and see where, uh, you know, th it's my experience with, with situations like this that um, um, something always, you know, kind of falls off the table and uh, so many things to focus on. Right. And, and, and it seems to me that somehow this may have been one of those situations in other words, what were the agreements, mm -hmm. and, and and are we living up to the agreements, and what are the disagreements right. around that? Um, you know, that's what I like to revisit myself, because I think that uh, you know the, that decision was made. There was a responsibility uh, to live up to it, and, um, and 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 you know, so those are my thoughts on it. I don't know a whole lot about it, to be honest. Right. But but I you know it, but I have uh, you know I've had conversations about it. Okay. So lastly, I and appreciate. You taking the time with us uh, here and sharing your thoughts? Oh no, with thank the you for thank you for the opportunity. And, and we always, you know, we always reach, try to reach out to all the candidates, and sometimes some candidates don't, you know, don't want to, you know, get on camera and don't want to do this. So we appreciate you coming on board and doing it. Um, and so being and being first, at, well, you are yeah. the first first one. <laughs> I've got uh, there, there are a couple others who have, who are on board and we're just trying to schedule them. But we definitely appreciate you being you yeah. know, so so sure. quick to, to to join us uh, uh, online. Um, so you know, uh, as you. You join council. Um, what you know? Uh, just to kind of summarize for for voters, why should they come vote for you? Because I'm going to be a voice of reason around our our economics coming out of COVID. We're going to have some pressures, and we and we want to maintain our services without having to raise taxes. Right? That's going to be one of the biggest issues coming down. Right, right now, we have solid back. You know, we have we have uh, reserves, 
And so I'm going to be looking out for that. Right. But I'm also going to be proactive in trying to uh, look uh, for uh, the raising uh, uh, revenues for the city through economic development that makes sense, right. that's family friendly, that keeps with the character of the city, and, and also to be a voice for um, addressing all the criminal issues that we may have, and to make sure that our residents are well informed and that their voices are heard um, and their concerns are heard. I'd like to see more people come to council right. meetings. You know, as you're, as you're saying that, there are a couple of comments that are coming through uh, live stream here, and one of them is, uh, as you're touching on, on crime and keeping people informed, and, uh, uh, you know, there was a, a plans by the county to expand TGK, and fortunately, Mayor Dino was actually one of the ones who, who kind of raised the red flag from, from the village of Virginia Gardens and said, hey, we got a major, major problems going on over here. Uh, we need to kind of attack that. Tell us a little bit about, let's say, that issue, as, as crime has been one of the things that you've talked about, and I know... It, Not that's TGK, been a big issue. TGK, TGK, uh, you know, the the uh, Turner Gifford Knight uh, Correction Center on, oh, on 36 yes, Street and, yes, and the yes. plan that you know was for to, to expand the jail there. Yeah, and no, basically no. the the uh, uh, no, county no, wants no. to shut down the old jail no, downtown. No, 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 I'm not in favor of expansion. <laughs> that no, there's no, uh, you know, I think that uh, look, um, you know, uh, while we have, well we still have a system right. where we put people in jail, right? right? Um, you know, everyone's got to share that that uh, that uh, responsibility and that load. And uh, you know, my understanding is we get a lot of foot traffic and a lot of problems uh, mm -hmm. around there, uh, and that I think feed in some aspects uh, potential criminality. Right. So I am not for expanding uh, that area at all. I would definitely appreciate that. Um, you know, I, you've answered everything that, that I had here planned for you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? And share yeah, no, I just, uh, you know, when I talk about yeah. um, uh, the relationship and the, and the conversations with, uh, with the residents and the information, one of the things that I'm struck by is, uh, and, and I'm going to be going to some meetings soon, is uh, we, we have a set of boards and commission, right. and, and sometimes a couple of the complaints that I've gotten from folks is, well, why should I serve on a commission? The, commi the, the city council doesn't listen to us. <laughs> and, and, you know, so I talked to, you know, uh, city council people who said, well, I've you heard know, that many pe times. Pe <laughs> people don't join the commissions, you know, they yeah. don't want to join, uh, you know, and, and I think that's a shame because uh -huh. we've got, uh, you know, about eight or nine uh, different boards and commissions that do really, uh, you know, they're, that are chartered to do some really good things. Right. And it's an excellent way to keep the community informed and participating. And uh, having served on a ton of boards, uh -huh. uh, some of them of which I cannot remember. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a volunteer. It's an almost a thankless job, but it's it a very is. important job. Right. And, and, and you have to really uh, strike a balance in situations like boards and commissions between what the city is asking people to do in their volunteer time uh -huh. to bring their voice, to bring their ideas, and, and what, what can be done once those ideas are brought to council, and how do we handle discrepancies and things that might want to be done that really can't be done or can be done later on because you really want to appreciate the people's time yeah. who sit on these boards and commissions and at the same time not feel like they're either getting muscled or they're not listening to they ask me to volunteer for this and then they won't listen and and sometimes you know you got to find you got to be able to negotiate negotiate those things but I'm, i've been a person who's worked with a lot of groups in all my jobs in the community mm -hmm. where i've been uh, about bringing people together and really listening and, and making things work. Excellent. Well, Dr. Vasquez, we really appreciate your time and thank you for sharing this uh, on uh, MiamiSprings.com's Facebook page. We'll be uh, uh, pushing this to YouTube and on the MiamiSprings.com homepage uh, shortly and definitely appreciate your time. Thank, thank you so you. much thank and we wish you uh, make good luck. Make sure to vote election. on April 6th. Excellent. <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate thank it. Take care.